This is a mango. So is this and this and these. I could go on all day because there are over a thousand named varieties of mango. And here at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, we grow about 25 different kinds. Some varieties, like this Naomi, are large and plump and kidney shaped. Valencia Pride is oblong, has rounded edges, and when these guys are ripe, they've got just about every color in the rainbow. Nam Doc Mai also grow oblong, but they have pointed edges. Nam Doc Mai were first cultivated in Asia. The Raposa you see here behind me was first cultivated at the University of Hawaii. This guy here is called the Glen, and it is a classic Florida mango. Not only because it has a classic mango flavor, but because it was first cultivated right here in South Florida. The Valencia Pride was also first cultivated right here in South Florida. It's got a classic mango flavor with a very strong hint of coconut. As you see behind me here, the Valencia Pride is a very strong producer. It's also very consistent. While we're on the topic of strong, consistent producers, let's come back to the Naomi. This tree is loaded. The Naomi also has a classic mango flavor. And I'm not sure whether to call it a Florida mango or an Israeli mango. Because while the Naomi was first cultivated in Israel, it is the offspring of two very common Florida varieties, the Hayden and the Palmer. So this little guy's mommy and daddy are Florida varieties, but he is the result of a breeding program that took place over in Israel. Naomi and Nam Doc Mai are not the only variety I grow that come from the other side of the globe. We also grow the Kesar, which is from India. And varieties from India tend to be delicious. In fact, I think India might be the place where mangoes were first cultivated. I'm not 100% sure on that. This tree is only in its third season, and normally I would prune away fruit in a young tree so that the tree could grow bigger faster. But I love the Kesar so much, I'm going to let it hold its fruit this year so I can eat it. Lucky for us, you don't have to travel the world looking for good tasting mangoes. Sometimes they grow right in our own backyard, like this variety right here, which I call the Balliot. This tree was grown from seed right here in my grove. Most of the time when you plant a mango from seed, it's so-so, not very noteworthy, but this one is noteworthy for a number of reasons. First of all, the flavor is delicious. It's got a classic mango flavor with hints of citrus. The flesh is bright, bright yellow and has a little bit of a powdery dryness to it. The tree produces a consistently large crop every year. The fruit are large. These are going to get bigger. These, we'll be picking these in about a month. And we pick the Balliot mango in the month of May, which makes it an early season mango. And I named it Balliot because when, when you grow your own tree from seed and a new variety pops up, the grower gets to name it. And Balliot is the name of my maternal grandparents. So I named it Balliot as an honor to their legacy. Unlike my Balliot variety that was a lucky genetic mutation that just sprung up from a seed in my grove, most new cultivars are the result of breeding programs. The pros say to themselves, wow, I really, really love the taste of this Gary. But the Gary is known to be a shy producer. It'll take a year off sometimes. On the other hand, we have a variety like this big tree here in my neighbor's yard called Palmer. Palmer is an insanely good producer. Palmer trees are loaded. One Palmer tree in a backyard is more mangoes than a family could eat in a season. During flowering season, a breeder will go out and clip the flowers from one of the varieties that they want to replicate. They'll look for a panicle with a bunch of male flowers with pollen, cut that panicle, extract the pollen, and pollinate the female flowers of the other variety they want to breed with. You might take the pollen from a palmer and breed it with the female flower of a Gary. Or you could take the pollen of a Gary and breed it with a palmer. In an attempt to get a tree with the productivity of a palmer and the flavor of a Gary. They are hoping that out of the dozens or even hundreds of seeds they planted that were a crossbreed 
of two varieties that they're trying to breed together, they are hoping that at least one of them will taste good. And if it does, that tree is selected. And this happens to be one such tree. Yes, it needs a little watering, which I'm gonna to get to after I film this video. And this is currently known as the O15 mango. And while I don't know this for sure, I'm inclined to believe that O15 represents something similar to the seed that produced this tree was in a pot that sat in like column O, row 15 at their nursery. But just because the fruit tastes good, it doesn't mean the O15 is going to be a future variety. We still need to know, is it disease resistant? Does it produce a heavy crop? Does it grow fast? Does it grow slow? Does it bear every year or is it an alternate bearer? So the next thing they do is roll out the tree to the mango community, to the commercial growers, to the backyard growers. And then we grow the tree and observe its behavior. Does it grow fast? Does it grow slow? Is it disease resistant? Does it produce a good crop? Does it produce every year? And the more you answer yes to those questions, the more likely this tree is gonna roll out into the market and get a name. Like this one here, the famous coconut cream. The mangoes produced on this tree are delicious. And the name is accurate. They do taste like coconut cream pie. This is a tree that might have been overlooked except for how delicious it tastes because it really doesn't hit its stride for productivity until year 10. Up to year 10, it's known to give a light crop. After year 10, it takes off. Now, what do we do with the trees that don't make the cut? What happens when people plant a tree and wait 10 years for it to give fruit and the fruit is disgusting? Like this seedling tree right here. This seed grown mango tree was growing in this spot and was already here when I first bought the farm. And it gave me fruit exactly two times in the first 13 seasons. In addition, the fruit had a funky taste to it and were susceptible to anthracnose, which is a fungal disease. We've come to that part of the video where I encourage you to go down into the comments and take a look at what the know-it-alls are saying. Because I guarantee you, people are already down there telling me I'm wrong. That it's not the fault of the tree. That it's not the genetics. They'll be trying to tell us that I'm doing something wrong. That in their country, they have superior soil that in their backyard, they use their grandma's concoction to create some kind of fertilizer that gives tons of delicious fruit every year. Allow me to debunk that misinformation. You see, I grow 30 acres of tropical fruit and I do the same exact thing with this mango tree that I do with my hundreds of other mango trees. This guy misbehaves, but over here, I'm ass deep in mangoes. With a few thousand avocado trees, I'm tits deep in avocado. Every year I grow more longan than a person will eat in their entire lifetime. We got bananas coming out our ears. We grow so many mulberries, I poop jelly. And then there's the notoriously fussy Jobata Caba, and mine's loaded with fruit. So no, it's not their magic soil. It's not their grandma's fertilizer. It's not their secret technique they think they know that farmers haven't figured out. It's genetics. And you know what? It's a good thing it is. Because I can fix this tree. I can turn this tree into any of the other varieties I've talked about today. In fact, I could turn this tree into any variety of mango I want to. And the way to do it is to cut it to the stump like I did here and let some new sprouts grow. You see these nice new green sprouts that are growing? They're growing as a result of me cutting this trunk. If I wanted to convert that tree to this variety, which is called Mahachinook, I could just cut a branch off my Mahachinook, cut away all these leaves, and fuse the cutting into one of these stems. The result will be a Mahachinook tree. Now, let's say instead of Mahachinook, my wife wanted me to turn it into a Kesar. Same thing. I could take a cutting off of this Kesar, splice it into that seedling, and convert it to a Kesar mango tree. But if I really wanted to keep peace in the family, I could put the Mahachinook on one sprout and the Kesar on another and have a tree that gives me two varieties of mango. Hell, if I was feeling a little bit crazy, I could put Mahachinook, Kesar, and leave some of the original branch growth and I would have 
three varieties. I would have the natural seedling and I would have the grafted Kesar and grafted Mahachinook all on one tree. Today you learn there are over a thousand varieties of mango. I showed you some of the different shapes, sizes, and colors that our mango varieties come in. We talked about flavor, we talked about growing characteristics, and I showed you how we commercial growers use the knowledge we've learned about mango genetics to not only create new varieties, but to ensure consistency in our current varieties. Odds are you've eaten a mango, but odds are you have not eaten a quality mango. If you go to the supermarket and buy your mangoes, that's the same thing as getting your tomatoes at the supermarket. They're crap, yuck. The commercial food industry prioritizes shelf life over quality. For that reason, your store-bought mango will have been picked from the tree too early. Then they chill it to slow the ripening process. Then when the fruit gets to where it's going, they hit it with methane to artificially ripen it. And depending on what state you live in, they may also have treated your mango with irradiation. I, on the other hand, want you to bite into one of these mangoes and experience the pleasure I get. When I take a bite of a mango, I wanna hug somebody. I love life. It makes all my problems go away just for those few little moments. And at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, we pick our fruit the day it's supposed to be picked and we put it in a box that same day and send it on its way to your doorstep. And if you would like to try a Sleepy Lizard Mango, you can get yourself a box at guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. We also sell our avocados at guacfarm.com, like this little beauty here. These guys are just getting ready to size up and pop. If you're feeling adventurous, you could get yourself some of this fruit here, which grows on this tree behind me. This is called Mame or Mame Sapote. And since most people have never tried this delicious tropical fruit, I'm running a special on guacfarm.com right now. Use promo code Mame and get $10 off your box. I mentioned earlier that some of my young mango trees need a little drink, so I'm gonna head out and get these guys some water. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.